All right, so today we will be testing AMD's FSR3 in Forspoken. Luckily, they introduced it into the demo as well. Otherwise, uh, you would have waited for a video from me because uh, I'm not spending $80 on a game. Anyway, uh, so we've got uh, two flavors here, right? So it's more or less the same as what NVIDIA did. You've got the separation between super resolution and frame generation. Unfortunately, in Forspoken, you can't use uh, frame generation with NVIDIA DLSS, whereas with the NVIDIA's frame generation, you can use any upscaling tech that you want with the frame generation, right? So you need to enable FSR super resolution. You can run it at native AA, and then you've got the toggle to enable frame generation. Now, just one thing to note is that your display settings, it's locked to 120 frames per second, right? You can't change that. Unless you enable frame generation, the moment you enable it, this becomes 240 frames per second. So I'll be testing this on an RTX of 4070 first, and then we'll move over to the RX 7600, just to see if there's a difference between how NVIDIA does this, or how it runs on NVIDIA GPUs, versus how it runs on AMD GPUs. All right, so currently I just, I selected the high preset, right? But then you can't change anything, which is kind of stupid. It doesn't allow you to change anything and just make it custom. So I'm selecting the high preset, but then I'm enabling custom, right? And then you've got access to all of these. Otherwise they grayed out. Then I want done like that. Uh, as I said, I'm not a big fan of this game. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not the best thing out there. Anyway, so we'll be testing with it uh, off first. I'm just going to be testing the frame rates if you want to see visual comparisons. Better wait for the Digital Foundry video. They do a lot better job than me at uh, that specifically. Anyway, enough time wasted. At uh, native 1440p on the high preset, let's see what the differences are. All right, so and I remember previously we were struggling to hit 60 frames per second in this game. It'll drop below 60 frames per second at times still, even on an RTX 4070. Remember this is at the native, so really no uh, upscaling happening here and uh, no frame generation whatsoever. And uh, I mean, we didn't drop below 60 frames per second there, but it came pretty close, right? So one thing that really um, impacted the frame rate a lot is this particular spell. And uh, I mean, there you can see it drops even below 50 frames per second, right? This is a pretty demanding uh, spell, this. Now, one great thing about uh, this game, or might I say the only good thing about this game, is you can you can have a look at the frame time graph or the, the frame rate in the top left-hand corner there. And as I change settings, it actually applies them, right? So you can see that the frame rate, everything uh, goes up. So you can you can more or less see what kind of differences you'll get. I won't be doing it this way. I just wanted to show you that you can actually, for instance, if I now enable frame generation, you'll see that our frame rate goes up to 120 frames per second, right? I'm going to be reloading my saves for all of the, the testing, just to keep it fair, just to make sure that uh, all the settings applied correctly, because uh, there are sometimes still some issues with the settings menu. Looking at you, Cyberpunk. Anyway, so let's just uh, go to the title screen and uh, continue from where we were. Right, so first off, we'll just do native AA with the uh, frame generation enabled. Remember, we dropped below 50 frames per second at times. So let's see if a frame generation can help us with that. Just one thing, just have a look at the frame time graph there. Um, that becomes very inconsistent. Now, frame generation from NVIDIA does more or less the same, except it evens out after a few seconds. This, it seems like uh, MSI Afterburner can't read the frame time graph properly or can't read the frame times and report on it properly. You can see the frame time graph says that it's uh, intervals of 0 0.3 milliseconds. Uh, I mean, the frame times are at 0.3 to 0 0.6 milliseconds, which is definitely not correct. All right, so once again, the same preset just now with the frame generation enabled and a native anti-aliasing. This game does load very quick, so I'm just going to reset our numbers and I must say that while the frame rate is now around 40 frames per second higher, it doesn't feel good. Uh, it feels like micro stuttering. Like it, it's very strange. It's not input latency, um, although there is obviously added input latency, similar to NVIDIA's frame generation. I've got no idea how to actually show the, the input latency here, but 
that's just the <laughs> that's a skill issue right but you can see that we gained quite a quite a few frames per second there went from around 60 to around 100 frames per second and our gpu is just still pegged at like 98 percent but it does it does just feel a little bit quirky right so if we cast this spell let's see by how much it drops that's not the correct spell all right there we go i'm not used to playing keyboard and mouse in this game i play with the controller so strangely enough we we drop down to well into the low 60s anyway with the frame generation enabled now i'm not sure i'm not going to be doing a visual comparison yet there obviously will be some anomalies digital foundry would be much better suited to uh, analyzing that so let me just uh, reload the save once again and then we'll enable fsr super resolution alongside frame generation to see what it looks like right so once again exactly the same settings i'm just going to use uh, fsr quality alongside frame generation remember we had around 100 frames per second dipping down into the mid 60s there so let's display our numbers while it loads and now suddenly we're getting 130 frames per second so another 30 percent uh, bump in performance there just by going to fsr quality now i mean this is quite a big jump and I don't know what it is but the game feels much better now it's not just because the frame rate is 30 percent higher and the input latency is slightly lower it just does not feel like that uh, a micro stuttering occurred again when it was when we were without uh, fsr super resolution so it does seem like fsr super resolution alongside frame generation is the better bet here I've never seen these monsters before, but let's cast our big spell here, and that's not the big spell. <laughs> there we go. Alright, let's see. I did test this earlier, and it didn't drop below 100 frames per second. I mean, slightly, 98 frames per second. So, I mean, FSR is definitely doing quite well when it comes to performance, and all of a sudden you're going from a 60 frames per second, sometimes even a sub 60 frames per second, to a high refresh rate experience and that's pretty good so i'm not sure why amd was so hesitant to release this i mean sure you need to to have a test subject i think this will be great in the star field but uh, all right that's it for the nvidia gpu testing let's move over to the rx 7600 all right we're now on my second bench system we're running at 1080p this is the one with the rx 7600 but it's also got an intel 12400f cpu whereas the previous one had an intel 12700k cpu anyway exactly the same settings just the, this time without fsr super resolution or frame generation just at 1080p and uh, let's see what happens all right so in this same area I mean, we're getting pretty much the same performance as what we had with the 4070 at uh, 1440p. Uh, just this is now only at 1080p. And it's definitely not bad for this uh, GPU, for this uh, RX 7600. So it's a very entry-level GPU. It's very uh, affordable, actually. And I got uh, Starfield free with it, which I used for uh, my other benchmarking video. So that was a bit of a, a score. But as you can see around 60 frames per second but our uh, lows are pretty terrible our 0.1 percent lows our one percent lows are pretty good but um all right so frame time graph looks uh, very smooth etc let's just uh, cast this let's see how much the frame rate drops by and seeing very similar performance uh, than the rtx 4070 right they're uh, dropping into the mid 40s there all right so let's see what happens once we enable frame generation Right, so first off, we'll just do native AA with frame generation. And funny enough, you can still see that the frame time graph is extremely um, broken. That's the correct word. So we're not getting any difference uh, with regards to the frame time graph or the frame time pacing uh, between AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. I just think that uh, it's maybe just the monitoring that's not working as it should the moment you enable frame generation i don't think that's a fair representation of the frame time graph obviously because the frame is not being rendered once every 0.2 milliseconds all right so this is just with native aa frame generation enabled previously on the 4070 we got around 100 frames per second let me just reset my numbers here and i mean now it seems like we're getting a little bit more uh, than on the rtx 
4070. This is not a comparison between the two GPUs at all. This is me showing the difference between AMD and NVIDIA GPUs when it comes to frame generation, just to see if there's any differences. So let's just cast this again. And we're dipping I mean, into the 80s there. So it's definitely not a terrible experience. If you want a high refresh rate experience on an RX 7600, it now definitely is possible. All right, so let's see what it looks like the moment we start enabling FSR super resolution as well. I'm um, just going back into the title menu just to make sure that all the settings apply properly. You can change all these settings in game, but uh, just to make sure that everything is okay, I just go into the title menu. Not that that ensures it, but I think it's just uh, one additional step. All right, so let's uh, reset our numbers. And once again, we're getting 165 frames per second here, 150. So definitely a very good experience. And with FSR super resolution, the game definitely feels a lot less stuttery. With only enabling frame generation without using FSR super resolution, the game does feel kind of stuttery. Like it's, it's like a mini micro stutter. It's not a micro stutter, it's not a mini stutter, it's something in between. And it is definitely noticeable. All right, so let me, let me just uh, cast this spell and uh, see if we can maintain a high refresh rate experience here. I mean, staying above 120 frames per second. And <laughs> that's actually pretty good. Now, I just want to see if we can get the latency monitor up here using anti-lag plus. So I'll be right back. All right, so I managed to finally get anti-lag plus enabled. For some reason, this toggle just wasn't there. But uh, all right, let's see if we can actually spot the differences in game. All right, so now with anti-lag plus enabled, we can actually see the, what I'd assume is the true frame time. I mean, it's between 10 and 12 milliseconds, which makes more sense than 0.3 milliseconds. One thing that I just can't get working though is the <laughs> monitoring. If I press Alt, Shift and L, it's supposed to bring us uh, up a latency monitor which uh, doesn't it just brings up that small <laughs> arrow in the top left hand corner anyway maybe i'm just doing something wrong doesn't really matter we've got uh, anti-lag plus working here and i mean it does feel slightly better i wouldn't say it makes a world of difference but it does it does indeed feel feel a bit better i just want to see if it does feel better even if we don't use uh, any FSR super resolution stuff here. Then it's just going. Uh, so let's use it with native because previously this this just felt very stuttery. Doesn't feel the best. Like it it does feel slightly better. A latency monitor would actually help a lot in this case. I got no idea why mine is not working. I'll definitely do a follow up video where I do a little bit more in depth uh, testing with FSR three, but. So far, I really can't fault the performance at all. It is, it's quite impressive actually. And if you don't mind, I mean, FSR is definitely not perfect. You can just uh, look at the grass there uh, as soon as I run forward. Like there's a lot of shimmering and stuff happening with the FSR, unfortunately. But this is pretty good because it's working on NVIDIA GPUs. It's working on uh, Radeon GPUs. I do know that there are recommendations for GPUs, but it's definitely a much bigger supported list than what uh, frame generation from NVIDIA supports. So in that case, it is definitely a big win. So let me just enable FSR quality here again. See, so there we go. So I mean, we're getting 160 frames per second here when there's no fighting, dropping down to 120 frames per second uh, when there is a lot of fighting and a lot of spells on uh, on the screen. Definitely much better than 50 to 60 frames per second. So from my experience here, enabling frame generation with super resolution on quality, which is uh, pretty okay, I would guess. Uh, you double your frame rate and that is really impressive right so one last thing that i just want to do is what happens if we actually test this at a higher uh, resolution right so let's let's go to 4k and over here we're getting 54 frames per second right at 4k but this is with fsr set to quality and now there's a definite like a <laughs> change in input latency the game looks amazing i mean it doesn't look amazing in movement and you can see we are 
at around 33 milliseconds for, for the frame time graph, right? So that that amounts to around 30 frames per second, actually. So maybe that gives us a better idea of what the input latency actually feels like. So if the frame time graph, in a case that it takes 33 milliseconds for a frame to be generated, that's actually 30 frames per second. Maybe we can equate the input latency to around 30 frames per second. I will, I mean, I'm just guessing here, I will uh, do a follow-up video where I get the latency monitor working obviously but uh, for now we're just uh, focusing on the performance right so let's just go down to performance i mean performance at 4k is definitely still doable and we're not gaining much right so just look at our i mean there it goes so now it's at 72 74 it takes a while for it to to actually do something so all right so at 4k with frame generation fsr Super resolution at ultra performance. We're looking at 80 frames per second, right? And 20 millisecond uh, frame time. So, I mean, I cannot go down. There we go. So now it, it takes a little while to actually do something. And now it's uh, up to 100 frames per second. I think the higher the resolution, you should just uh, give it a little bit of uh, time for it to settle down. Frame generation from NVIDIA has more or less the same thing, although it, it is a little bit quicker to actually normalize. All right, so let's just see, now that we've got 100 frames per second here, right? Let's see if we disable frame generation here, what uh, difference it makes. All right, so 60 frames per second, the input latency feels great. Um, I mean, we're getting 70 frames per second here, and immediately after disabling frame generation, you can just feel the responsiveness increase a lot. All right, so it looks like we're gaining around 30% when it comes to uh, the frame rate, right? So from a little bit more than 30%. So we go from 70 frames per second to around 100 frames per second if you are patient enough to let it normalize. The input latency is definitely not terrible i mean for a game like this i wouldn't mind playing like this at all it's just that at the base frame rate at uh, 50 frames per second it is slightly low and it's the same on nvidia's frame generation as well when you've got a lower base frame rate the input latency is a lot higher and it is definitely a lot more noticeable so for that i would i'd recommend getting around 60 frames per second plus but you can see that frame generation works even at 4k and this is actually pretty good news i think this is pretty impressive for amd's first try all right that's going to be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one